In the section of the Book of Common Prayer that contains the special liturgies for Lent and Holy Week, there are two gospel options for Monday Thursday service. Either the story from John of Jesus issuing the mandatum that we heard today, or the institution of the first Eucharist from the Gospel of Luke. The Gospel reading from Luke opens with the scene of the final Passover meal that Jesus and his disciples will share together. It is here with his friends in the upper room that Jesus announces the arrival of the new covenant, a covenant that will be poured out with his most precious blood, innocent blood that will be shed on the cross in just a few short hours. It is into this covenant that we have each been baptized. Jesus tells of this new covenant while giving specific directions. The word Maundy is an old English word. However, it was derived from the Latin word mandatum, which means command or order. The more modern English word mandate is closely related. Today's unique service takes its name, therefore, from this theme to command or instruct. And Jesus takes this opportunity to give his disciples certain things to do after he is gone. This is the focus of what we heard today in the Gospel of John. Also, what would have been the eve of the Jewish Passover, there was a strong theme of remembrance for his disciples and now for us. This is what biblical scholars call anamnesis. I have talked about this on occasion over the past two years, but it's worth reminding ourselves of this powerful metaphor. Anamnesis comes from the Greek word that means memorial. For us, this anamnesis signifies the remembrance of Christ's passion, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. It therefore plays a major part in the reenactments of the events that Jesus instituted in that first Eucharist. The great liturgical scholar, Don Gregory Hicks, called anamnesis the recalling or re-presenting of God in our midst. When we follow Jesus' instructions to do this in remembrance of me, it is much more than just a recreation. It is the actual presence of our Lord and Savior manifest for us tangibly in our lives. The universe is a method by which a supernatural being, God, brings his presence into the earthly dimension in which we reside. It is quite literally transcendent. Transcendent. This is to say that it extends or lies beyond the limits of our ordinary experience. How the presence of Christ occurs in the Eucharist is quite simply a mystery. It is beyond human comprehension. But we can comprehend the command that Jesus left us with and his instructions for this service and the two main themes that govern it. These include the institution of the Eucharist as the principal expression of the new covenant, the receipt of bread or symbolized for the disciples, and for us, the body of Christ, and the wine, his blood, poured out for the sins of the whole world. It could be argued that much of what we do as Anglicans in our liturgies is dominated by this idea of it is the remembrance of what Jesus did and said on this Monday birthday. Let us especially remember what he has commanded each.
each of us to do. Secondly, if you look at today's gospel reading from John, then there is a commandment that mutual love is to be shared among all of Jesus' followers. Jesus told his disciples, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. The Holy Eucharist is a meal born out of love in its purest form. There is no stronger theme of Anamnesis than in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. To this day, we remember Jesus' commandment to love one another every time we celebrate the Eucharist. Not only do we share communion with God through Jesus in the sacrament, but also with each other. At the Last Supper, the first Eucharist, we are given a glimpse of the sheer power of Jesus. In a few short hours, he would be arrested, and after enduring ridicule and torture, he was abandoned by some of these same friends for whom he was willing to die. Then he would be crucified. Yet there in the upper room, he announces, Calmly, that his blood was to be poured out for the sins of the whole world. By instructing his disciples to partake of the bread and the wine as his body and blood, Jesus set up a memorial of his death and passion for all generations that will follow. Here he lies the fulfillment of two of Jesus' commands that we remember today. The command to do this is off the Jesus bring it, of course, in reference to the Holy Eucharist, and in the sharing of mutual love for one another. Again, almost all of what we do in our liturgy is derived from what occurred in the upper room the night before Jesus was crucified. But there is another, almost separate aspect to the service that we are doing today. That is the ceremonial stripping of the altar and the church of all its adornments. After the Eucharist and until the light of Christ is brought back into the church of the new Easter, we will remember that Christ is in the tomb, dead and buried. We will strip our altar, and in fact, in the entire sanctuary, of every symbol of the living Christ. After stripping the altar and we part, we do so in silence, leading through various exits. For us, this is again anamnesis. We remember that the disciples abandoned Jesus scattering, fleeing in fear into the dark night. At no other time in the church here is the true remembrance of Christ as our Savior as immediately recognizable as it is over the next three days. It has been said about Good Friday, Easter is nothing but a time of flowers and new clothes. It is a figment of sentimentality. It is a ceremony without true meaning. So we will strip away all of the trappings, all of the magnificence and glorious symbols of our Lord, while the chilling words of Psalm 22 are read aloud. And while we are doing this in Anamnesis of the Living Christ, let us all remember that he died a cruel and horrible death, having given everything he had for us, his body, his blood, and his love. The Maudie Thursday liturgy is one of both beginnings and endings. What was begun on Ash Wednesday is brought to a close here today. And what begins today with this service, 
does not end until the resurrection of Easter. It is the ancient triduum, the sacred three days, which lead us to Easter. Monday Thursday, Good Friday, Holy Saturday, and the great vigil of Easter. The theme for us today is love. Our Savior's love for us expressed in the giving of himself in both bread and wine in his impending death on the cross. Through our collective prayers of confession, we pray together for the forgiveness of our sins. On Ash Wednesday, we began Lent with the imposition of ashes and a major act of confession. What we will experience over the next three days is the answer to those prayers. Forgiveness comes to us all now through the death and resurrection of our Lord. Lessons of love are read. The example of love is given with a new command, the mandate from which this day draws its name. Love one another. The prayers are said, the table is made ready, the time of the Lord's Supper arrives, and our Lord is revealed to us in bread and wine. It is a solemn occasion. It is the very essence of anamnesis. The symbol of Christ in our church and in our lives, the altar, will be stripped bare, just as the Christ was stripped of all his power and glory. There could be no resurrection without the cross. As the 20th century martyr Dietrich Bonhoeffer often said, there can be no cheap grace. Good writing is inescapable. The powers of darkness are hard at work. We have no choice. In silence, we will depart. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.